Humber Sports Partnerships Coaching Conference, Coaching Humber, was designed to support the training and development needs of all levels of coach across the Humber. It introduced coaches to a variety of hot topics, such as coaching the national picture, uh, sports psychology, and also multi-skills. And the real aims of the conference was to enable the coaches to take stuff away for them to deliver in their sessions. It also introduced the coaches to some new developments in the coaching picture across, uh, across uh, England. The conference was attended by a wide range of coaches, it was attended by community coaches, national governing body coaches, local authority community sports coaches and also coaches involved with our local providers. The feedback we got from the conference was excellent as stated through the evaluation forms and we're looking forward to working with these coaches, continuing to support their training development over the upcoming years. understand how valuable it has been for you in your own journeys. If we look at the national agenda, had a change of government and um, there was a lot of um, unease around it, about what the future is going to be. Um, but I think that I'm fairly very <laughs> We certainly will have, tonight I've seen on the list that I've got here, there's quite a few people from different sports, so it'd be good to get some feelings of what's actually happening on the ground, um, and your understanding of your own governing body. Just in your groups of uh, four or five, so we've got four here, three there, we'll bring it all together, because <laughs> you're not going to get a chocolate bar for this. <laughs> right? I just want you to think about what is the current coaching landscape in Hull and Humber. What do we do at the moment to support developing coaches? What's out there to support developing coaches? What initiatives are out there? Volunteer programs. Volunteer programs. Anything else? Mentoring schemes to try and bring on those coaches and share experience. It would be a lot easier, it was. But then you wind out, you make the pitch a lot bigger, really make it use of space. But that isn't something that kids will always do. Yes. And so sometimes you have to reinforce how good that was because, my goodness, look what you were doing to this game. You allowed this person to have the ball. It's like music to my ears, but what is, what is coaching instinct generally when you see kids doing that? What does, what's traditional coaching is to get involved? Get involved, come on, get involved, get busy, get involved in the practice. I get someone like Mark to play it out of the game and he's never touched the ball once. Yeah. And your player has never touched the ball once. Yeah. And you have to go. Yeah. Down in practice for us, the defender. So we've got our practice running, which is for the attacking team to try and achieve success. But if I'm trying to think about that, so I've got the two attackers working together and making decisions, 
that's fine. Who might be affected in that practice? The defender. Because there's no motivation to defend properly. Because what do I do? Who, who's defending the ball? You, you can either play through any of these goals. So now you're trying to spend 100% of the defenders have intensity. You're also allowing the attackers to try and put it on as well. We defend oh, well, well, that's the only thing we defend. You see, that's what Scott's is for. Scott's is for coming with there. Well, well, I'm now asking the, defense, the attackers to defend them as well. Well, if I get that bit from my kids, I'm ticking a massive box for that kid. Because if he does nick it, he's going to counter attack, which is what we wanted to do in a game. But if he's counter attacking, I want you to recognise it as a transition. And can you prevent him from counter attacking? Because quite a lot of the time, you, know, you see the kids, because they lose the ball, and then they stop. You and then they just watch the play go back. But the kids will pass it off the ball, thank you very much. I'm going to the game and watch it. Right, let's get some success. and then move to the next object, so could be the girder, the computer screen, the chair, another person. So if you just do that for about 30 seconds, so as soon as you, as soon as you see something, go on to the next thing. Let's just see how quickly you can do that. See something, go on to the next thing. Bound in. Here you go. Yes. It's just a two of them to get past. 